Yo, what is up? Jacob here and today I want to talk to you about six things uh, I wish I knew when I started to code. So the first thing I want to talk about is basically the concept which a lot of people have it wrong. Like people think that sometimes it's just late to learn programming. In my opinion, it's it's never like that. Okay, maybe if you are like 70 and you have like your whole life behind you, then it may be a little bit too late, but you can still do it just for fun. But whenever I hear people who are like 21, 22, 23, they already finished one bachelor's and they say, yeah, it's already too late for me because I have this degree in marketing or business and uh, it's too late. I don't want to spend next three, four years uh, going again back to university, learning to code. You see, this approach is totally wrong. It's never too late because simply all you have to do right now, like if you never coded before, go to Google and type how to start coding. That's it. You get like millions, millions of searches with tutorials, with videos, like with everything, with articles, uh, how to do it. And trust me, you can literally do it right now. Personally, I believe that if you are about to start coding and you're a kind of smart guy, it will take you maximum three months and then after that, I'm pretty sure you'll be good. It's all about the commitment here. Okay? If you'll actually say, yes, I will learn coding and you will actually commit to do that. So you will spend every day a few hours uh, reading uh, documentations, going through tutorials, building your own products, which are super important. It's also one of the points then you will do that. But if you just say, yeah, I want to learn to code, but you are not going to do anything about it, then obviously there's no way uh, you're going to do that. Here as an example, I can uh, tell you that basically in my university, the average age people who start uh, is around 25. So there are a lot of people who already finished their other universities, other studies, but they just wanted to uh, switch their career and they started again. And here I also want to talk about the next uh, bullet point, which is uh, you don't basically need also university. You don't need a degree. Like this is a myth. If someone tells you, uh, if someone wants a degree from you in order to hire you, then you should, you probably shouldn't go there. If someone is asking you about a degree, but not showing your skills, then this person probably has no idea about coding at all. You see, at coding, it's a little bit different than usual degrees. Um, here, what matters is actually the experience you got. And you can literally uh, start when you're at age seven and you can be literally a god when it comes to programming without going to university, without studying math, anything. Also, there's a really important thing. You don't need math at all. You can be front-end developer and you won't be dealing at any uh, math while you code. You may need some basics that obviously they think was like some abstract concepts, um, but you don't have to know uh, those heavy math maths which you're going to probably study at high school or at universities. Unless you want to be a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, but this topic is a little bit different. Also, when it comes to universities, uh, they don't only teach you how to code. Here's a little bit more things, right? If you're going to study IT, if you're going to study software engineering, you'll probably also learn some additional things, very high level maths, physics. Then you are, learn, are going to learn about how the hardware, about servers, about computers in general, what parts are, how they are built, from and also you have like a lot of different lectures about security network algorithms data structures like there's a bunch of subjects you're going to learn and the thing is if you just want a programmer they are not necessarily it's good to know them they are really helpful and if you finish in university with software engineering degree as an engineer right then there won't be any problem for you to find a job um, because you'll be on a high level. But the thing is, you can actually get this whole thing f much faster. So there are like boot camps, for example. For boot camps, you can literally go uh, and within three months, learn uh, much more 
when it comes to just programming than the average student from a university after three years. Or you can also be a self-taught developer. Uh, for example, on the Instagram community, I know a lot of those self-taught developers who are just learning by themselves. They are going through online courses, documentations, YouTube tutorials, and basically they code, they are freelancers, or they are already working for some company. So again, you don't need university. Number three, let's talk about programming languages because this concept actually was uh, super hard for me to understand. Personally, I started at high school with C and C++ and I stick to that. I didn't really know that there are like any other languages out there. Like I heard about them, but I was scared to jump to those. Like I was, I don't know, for some reason I had this, I was blocked. Uh, I, could, I, I thought that if I learned already C or C++, I won't be able to, to learn that, that quick PHP, Python, uh, JavaScript, whatever, right? I was stuck in this one programming language and I thought that if I'm going to quit it now, then everything I learn will be wasted. But it's not like that. It's totally different. See, programming in general is just a concept. The one of the exercises which I was doing in my high school and university is we were supposed to write a pseudocode on the paper. And basically what a pseudocode is, it's, it doesn't really have any structure. It's just a way of thinking, how you think and how you're going to solve that pro problem. So in programming, there are a few concepts which are repetitive in every programming language. There are loops, there are if statements, there are functions, there are objects. And once you understand them, then the rest is just a matter of language that programming language, so how to actually implement this in this particular format. So once you learn C, then you, you won't have any problem to learn Python. You, you literally can switch to the new programming language within seven days and be fluent in that. For example, I'm very good Python developer and I didn't really know about JavaScript, but then I started learning about it and I learned it within seven days. I built a whole e-commerce store in one month using Vue.js, not even JavaScript. I already jumped to the framework. I just know how to code, how to read documentation. So there's no problem with that. So never be stuck in just one technology, always be willing to learn new things when it comes to programming languages, framework. Like there's this meme that basically for JavaScript, there's a new framework every week. And maybe it's just a true. <laughs> So again, guys, don't be scared to switch the programming language. However, my advice is once you pick your programming language, stick to it for a while so you can go deeper in some libraries in, and be actual experts. So for example, me, uh, I'm expert in Django, right? It took me a while to understand the whole Django framework. I read the documentation multiple times. I solved multiple problems. I created multiple websites and now Whenever I have a client for my agency, it would take me 10, 10 times faster than the average Django developer because I have expertise in this particular field. So if you want to be a freelancer and do an actual business, then I would suggest you to niche down in one particular technology or just a few technologies and be expert there. Okay, guys, number four. So basically, I was lucky enough that I started implementing this very early uh, when I was starting, uh, when I was learning programming. Uh, what I mean is go to freaking hackathons. That's right, guys. By going to hackathons, uh, first of all, you are going to meet other developers. So if you are not from, uh, if you are, if you don't study programming and you don't have any programmers as your friends, then hackathons are the great places, great events to go and meet other people. And once you get there, you will also learn how to build part, how to work in a team, which is great before you get your first job, how to build actual full projects, like literally products, projects, uh, because in hackathons, in order to win, you actually have to build something in a very, very short period of time. So you'll literally learn how this whole concept of building the product from zero to finish looks like. And you will have a lot of fun and you may chance actually to win. And if you win and put it to your resume, you are most willing to get a job than the average uh, programmer after university or than the average person actually applying to the same position. 
So in my case, I won four hackathons. I put them to resume. And basically, whenever I had the job interview, people were asking me about those projects. And it actually helped me to get my job as a, a programmer back then. Also, there's the advice in general. Once you start learning programming, don't be stuck in tutorial hell. Don't just go from tutorial to tutorial, from book to, to other book. Uh, what I suggest you is to actually build your projects. It might sound like a lot of people say so, but it's actually the most crucial, the most important advice, because then once you are stuck, there is no one who will help you, right? In tutorial, you can't really be stuck. You just follow the tutorial, follow the book, but in your real world project, once you're stuck, you gotta find the answer. And this is where you actually grow. You get out of your comfort zone and you learn. So do freaking projects, guys and go to hackathons. Okay, number five, which I should probably mention before, is learn the freaking basics. Like, for example, I told you that, yeah, I'm, after Python, I jumped to Vue.js or JavaScript and I actually learned it very quickly, but it's it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that in, in every case. See. If you don't learn basics, if you don't learn basics about like computers, network, HTTP protocols, uh, algorithms, data structures, concepts of programming like objects, if statements, for loops, then you can't really learn it, right? There's a certain fresh threshold you have to kind of pass in order to learn a new frameworks, new concepts and programming and so on. And this result means you need to first get all of the basics. So by that, I don't really mean go to university and learn those things and actually master them within like three or four years or sometimes even more if you do masters, but learn the basics. So for example, when you learn about HTTP protocols or internet and in general, once you're going to develop the APIs, you will know what is actually going behind. Uh, like under the hood, like you don't really know, have to know specifically about that, like what is going on there, but just have something in your mind and it will really, really help you in the long run. Okay, guys, and number six, um, read the freaking documentation. This is, this, this is something I learned actually very late. Uh, I was always feeling very uncomfortable when it comes to documentation because it's not written very well for like the average user, right? I was always going through tutorials and books or like I was asking people without really under going deep inside, for example, from fr some framework. So for example, when I was learning Django, I just went through some tutorials and I tried to basically build my own site but I never have any idea how things work under the hood. So for example, in Django, you have something called list view, which is very high abstract concept. And I have no idea what is the difference between this or just the uh, usual function for, for views, which you pass the request, okay? I didn't know that there's a request already passed. There's that you need to just um, write the object name there and basically the list view will be responsible for for displaying all of the objects uh, inside it. So really, if you're going to learn some particular new technology framework, read the documentations. It will really, really help you. And trust me, tutorials are great. I also recommend go through them. But then if you're going, if you're willing to build something on your own, I recommend you go through the documentation. I don't say read whole documentation because this is also not the case. Documentation is something you should always refer to if you are stuck. I would suggest go for the overview. There are like first steps usually when it comes to new frameworks. So for, for example, for Django REST framework, there's a small, uh, short tutorial. I highly recommend you uh, do so. And also the last thing, which is connected to the sixth point is learn how to use debug tools. I learned it also really late, uh, but for example, in Python, you can use PDB, for example, as your debug tool, or you can run your debug tool. You can put breakpoints, which are kind of the which are the points when the program will stop. You can set them in a view uh, in the PyCharm or in a Visual Studio Code. And basically, when you execute your script, you literally can pause it in some point and that, and inspect all of the variables 
uh, which are currently in this in this position and it will really really help you to for example find some bugs and so on so i highly recommend you to get familiar with the debug tools and yeah guys uh, that was it for this video i hope you like it and again i'm running the software agency with my friend and if there's something we can help your company uh, just text us dms and yeah guys thanks for watching and see you next time